Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMblog's KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2020 coverage. Today, we have with us Tenry Fu, the CEO and co-founder of SpectroCloud. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I guess if we want to just kind of kick things off, uh, if you could give us a quick, you know, overview of the company, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, so SpectroCloud is uh, founded by a team with uh, deep expertise in Kubernetes cloud management and enterprise. Uh, when I was an architect at VMware, I saw cloud was taking off and uh, started my first startup, uh, Clicker Technologies, uh, providing multi-cloud management platform. And Clicker was acquired by Cisco in 2016. There I saw impact of uh, containers and Kubernetes. In 2019, I left and uh, found the uh, special cloud with uh, some key clicker and the uh, special cloud uh, and, and, and the Cisco uh, veterans, right? And uh, focus on providing the best Kubernetes management platform for enterprise. Uh, and uh, also want to remove the trade off between the flexibility and the manageability that you see in some of the existing solutions. You know, as the world has been experiencing this major shift in the way that we're working and in the way that we attend trade shows uh, during this pandemic. How has that affected your company and how it operates and what changes have you made um, that, or changes that you've seen that your clients have made? Yeah, so the pandemic obviously impact the way we work and the way we attend trade shows. Uh, employees and their families' safety and health are the most important thing to us. So we still have everyone pretty much all work from home and uh, doing virtual BMS, right? With uh, uh, all trade show go virtual, uh, we uh, also invest more into the digital marketing, focus more on the content, webinars, and the Kubernetes community engagements. And you know we've seen a lot of growth in the uh, cloud containers and the Kubernetes industry, like you were saying. What big thoughts, changes, directions do you see for this industry moving forward into 2021? Yeah, so we see Kubernetes become more mature and uh, go into the mainstream adoption. Uh, many enterprises uh, are now moving away from a single large Kubernetes cluster to have uh, many smaller clusters to limit uh, the blast radius and also have a uh, different clusters for different use cases. So how to consistently manage uh, multiple clusters, potentially even in multiple cloud environment without the management overhead is really the key. Uh, in 2021, we also see Kubernetes adoption continue to pick up and some more advanced use case uh, will also start to emerge. For example, how to run Kubernetes on edge location, micro data centers, right? And also how to run Kubernetes uh, on bare metal hardware. And uh, Tenry, could you give us a kind of a, maybe a deeper dive into some of the solutions and technology that your company provides and you know, explain what you do and what problems you solve? Sure. Yeah, so at the heart of our technology, we use Kubernetes to manage Kubernetes infrastructure in the same way how Kubernetes manage applications. So we treat Kubernetes infrastructure uh, stack as a declarative model, uh, what we call a cluster profile. So those uh, the stack cover from base OS to Kubernetes to storage network and also additional add-ons like logging, monitoring, security, et cetera. But once a cluster profile is created, it becomes a blueprint or template uh, to be deployed to uh, the, the cluster profile to any target cloud environment, right? Uh, and also it becomes a single source of truth to drive the upgrade and the reconfiguration. So this way the consistency can be automatically maintained without having to deal with the complexity. And I guess kind of tagging on with that is, you know, could you talk about what makes your technology unique or differentiated in the marketplace? Yes, yeah, so we see a lot of uh, current Kubernetes solutions. They only provide either flexibility or ease of use, but not both, right? So clouds manage Kubernetes service like AKS, EKS, and GKE, they make 
Kubernetes lifecycle management easier, but at the cost of a call locking. Prepackaged solutions, they do a good job in enterprise support, but that sometimes take um, months to deploy and update. And they aren't flexible either. A lot of those solutions, uh, they have a fixed stack, sometimes not even compatible with the upstream community version. With yourself, bring the ultimate flexibility, but obviously it does not scale. So Spectral Cloud, we are targeting to bring the, the, together the flexibility of the DIY, supportability and the manageability of a package solutions, and also ease of use of a managed service experience, right, the best of all worlds. And around Kubernetes, um, a lot of companies are, you know, you have new announcements or new product releases. Uh, does Spectral Cloud have anything that, any new features or products coming out uh, that you can talk about? Absolutely, yeah. So our main business uh, is a SaaS, uh, but for some customers who want to deploy our management plane on-prem behind their firewall with or without internet, uh, we are about to uh, support the enterprise GitHub kind of a model, right? So you will get the same user experience, uh, but our software can be deployed and updated on-prem directly. And then uh, with, you know, talking about your product, is there uh, perhaps something you could show, maybe give us a quick demo of the product and let us see what it, uh, you know, let the viewers see what it looks like? Absolutely. I always love to demo. Cool. Yeah, so this is our SaaS platform. Uh, I integrate with Okta for this particular tenant. Uh, let me sign in real quick. So once user login out of box, uh, they will see there are a few, uh, a few out of box uh, class profiles that uh, they can directly easy to, uh, to deploy to different environment. Right, each of these uh, uh, environment, uh, this class profile has uh, predefined stacks, right? That they can very quickly to deploy. Uh, but what's more important uh, of our platform is uh, they can very easily uh, create uh, a class profile themselves, right? So for example, here, I'll say, uh, CT demo one. Right. And uh, now I can create a target cloud, uh, cloud environments uh, class profile. So for example, we're targeting VMware. And then now we can start to configure the cluster profile. So cluster profile is really, this is a declarative model of a Kubernetes, right? So there are four core layers from base OS to Kubernetes to storage and network. Out of the box, we have a variety of integration. User can easily pick and, pick and choose. For example, for Ubuntu, for base OS, and then for Kubernetes, uh, user can pick and choose um, multiple versions. We support uh, dynamic um, selection. You can say 1.18.x family, or if you want ping down to a particular version, you can select a particular version here. And all these Kubernetes configurations, outbox, uh, everything works. But if you want to make some change, for example, you want to change uh, some of the additional plugins, you want to change your Cypher suite, you can easily make modification here. Right? And similarly, uh, for network, I'll select Calico here. Uh, and for storage, since we are deployed to VMware, I'll choose uh, VMware volume. Right? And now the fun part, right? So in addition to those four core layers, you can very easily to pick and choose additional add-ons, right? From load balancer, ingress, logging, monitoring, security, and integrate even some of the, your own application that you need to deploy along with your Kubernetes cluster, right? So all these, uh, so just for the demo purpose, maybe I'll just uh, quickly choose uh, a few things, uh, right? So for example, will we use uh, uh, Citrix ADC for load balancer, right? And I'll add uh, a EFK for logging and uh, maybe Prometheus Grafana uh, for, for, for the monitoring. So now you create the entire uh, stack and this, uh, something here, yeah. 
So now, now we have the, the cluster uh, class profile created, and then now you can use this uh, class profile to deploy a cluster by creating the cluster. Uh, and also, once you have the, the create a cluster, uh, if uh, you want to drill in, right, you can see all these clusters around in time, uh, all these uh, uh, all the uh, runtime information. And uh, also you can use a cluster profile to drive update, right? So for example, my this existing cluster here, VMware C3, uh, it's uh, referring to uh, this uh, product VMware cluster profile. I, so if I go back to the class profile for this particular class profile, let's say I actually edit layer, I change Kubernetes from 1.17 to 1.18. I click finish here. And if I go back to my cluster list, you will immediately you will see there are two clusters that was previously deployed through this cluster profile. Now they'll show there's an update available, right? So. Uh, I can click the, the update now, right? And it will tell me what's the difference. So now we are going to upgrade from 1.17 to 1.18.8, right? And if I confirm, then our system will fully automate that and, uh, and uh, start the rolling upgrade uh, uh, node by node. Huh. So that's uh, a nutshell of uh, our, our class profile-based uh, uh, automation. And uh, as admin, I can also see all these additional cluster usage, right? Uh, so user uh, can see over time, right, what's their consumption, and they can set the different projects, right, with uh, a group of uh, uh, a group of uh, clusters, and they can set uh, uh, additional quota and the RBAC and all those um, uh, uh, into into the different projects. Well, thank you, Tenry, for uh, being on VM Blog. And uh, where can people go if they want to find out more information about some of the technologies you've talked about today? Yeah, so they can go to uh, uh, our website. Uh, uh, we have a lot more information there, and uh, we have uh, also a lot of uh, blogs, not only talk about our technology, but also the general trend of uh, Kubernetes and all these additional integrations. Uh, we are also uh, very engaged uh, with the community. Uh, our platform uh, is built on top of uh, Kubernetes cluster API project, right? And uh, we are very deeply involved with that, right? And uh, you can always find us uh, on GitHub and uh, on also uh, uh, in, the, in the cluster API community. Great. Well, thanks a lot. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from our cloud technology partners, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get notified next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Very important.